negotiation with Taliban? No. Why? Tell them why. My friend, America, the Western world, they're on a mission to conquer and colonize the world. Well, and the Eastern world is not. Tell me where they're doing it. Now, China. Where are they doing it? They you said the Eastern world is not. What are they doing? What countries are they in? America has military bases. And America has 800 military bases around the world. Yes, around the world. America is the facade, isn't it? Of course it is. It's a one world control. So, you know, they want you to believe that there is an East and a West. They want you to believe there are different races and nations and beliefs. I totally and agree. Of separation. I totally agree with you, sir. Right. However, however, so sir. You can't say that however, sir. And the East, sir. sir. Formerly, around planet. Formerly, when people wanted to conquer places, countries, the British once said the sun can never set on the British Empire. They conquered land by themselves. The French went out and conquered land. The Spanish went out and conquered land. The Portuguese went out and conquered land. The Germans went and conquered land. The Americans went and conquered land. And the land they conquered, they kept for themselves as part of the British Empire. The French also, the French realms. Nowadays, they don't do that. They now have a club called the International Community. They have a military called NATO, and they now do things selectively. They invade countries, and then they sit down and share the booty amongst themselves. So imperialism is still alive. I know exactly what you say. One world, one world order. They do exactly what they want, and they have the media to sell the lies. The media sells you the lies. And the Arab help them as well. Of course they do. Al Jazeera, the Qatar, Bahrain, six, six men help them. Of course. My friends, look at Libya. Look at Libya. Libya. We had the Tunisian uprising. They call it a protest. Egypt, protest. Bahrain, protest. Yemen, protest. Saudi Arabia, protest. Syria, protest. Libya, rebels. <laughs> What's the difference between a rebel and a protest? The rebels are armed. Rebels, the rebels are now receiving backing. The rebels, the rebels are the French. I mean, the French, the French are giving the Libyan rebels arms. How would you like it? How would you like it? How would you frame it in the media if some Arab, some Muslim nation began to arm the Greek protesters who are protesting in Greece today? How would you like it if the Greek protesters were armed? How would you like it if African nations? How would you like it if African nations began to arm the students who were protesting against your government? But that's the hypocrisy, the double standard. It's disgusting. It's disturbing. It's hypocritical. You're right. There's no government, but we allow them to get away with it. We don't question them. It is imperialism. It is. Fascist. Call it exactly what it is. Nazism. Nazism. So what's exactly what it is. So what do we do about it? The solution is to wake up. And then what? I believe the first step to revolution is not saving the world. It is saving yourself. Some people think I'm going to join this organization, join that, join forces. Save yourself first. Wake yourself up. Recognize the illusions and the lies. So when we meet en masse, we are all an enlightened people. Well, we know what to do about it. My friend, I believe it will reveal itself. Why do I say this? Because all revolutions, we even, as working people, the working classes, the working classes can't create revolution. We're too stupid. We have, we have too many things to run about. It's the middle classes. The middle classes are the ones who always throw revolution. The French Revolution, Robespierre, middle class. American Revolution, Patrick Henry, middle class. The Russian Revolution, Lenin, middle class. Karl Marx, middle class. Fidel Castro, Che Guevara, middle class. The Iranian Revolution, 1979, run by the students of the middle classes. Even when we get into the realm of make-believe, the abstract, even the heroes of make-believe are the middle classes. Flash Gordon! <laughs>
The Lone Ranger. Middle fucking class. Robin Hood. Middle class. Zorro. Middle class. What about Tom Big Batman? Batman, ruling fucking elite. Batman, ruling elite. Why is that? Because the middle classes are always the buffer class between the elite and the worker. The ruling elite owns the factories, the middle classes manage the factories, the workers work in the factories. When the middle classes are disgruntled with the ruling elite, they then get the workers who they have a relationship with to throw a coup against the elite. Because the ruling elite never have any relationship with the workers. They're not the man. ruling elite. That's not whatever the it might be. They think however, whatever they, whatever they might think yeah. they are. I'm saying to you, sir, poor people don't throw revolution in Tunisia. It was the students, the people of the middle classes in Egypt, the young people, the students, the middle classes, the educated. Revolution is quite easy to trace. Mao Zedong says a revolution is not a dinner party, or writing an essay, or painting a picture, or doing embroidery. It cannot be so refined and leisurely, so kind and gentle, so cool, restrained, temperate or magnanimous. A revolution is an insurrection whereby one class overthrows another. And we all agree, we need revolution. No. Clean air, clean water, no weapons. Those are your demands. We are now urbanized. Sir, the reality is people are moving away from the country to living in cities. With cities you need management, urban management. And the reality is we become confused. We've actually lost track of our even our innate values. We no longer value family, society, community. We have no sense of social responsibility. There are no rights of passage. Instead nowadays we value the shoes we wear. The car we drive, the house we live in, how big it is, how much money we're earning, what job you have, how much bonus you're going to get this year, how pretty your wife is for a handsome job for now. We've become superficial. You won't. You run out of there. You know what you value more. As soon as you run out of water, you know that you really value more. Of course. We think we value more. Of course. But we don't. Of course, sir. Sir, the illusion is people value these things. It's Lady Gaga. Sir, beyond what I'm saying to you now, how many of you are here? 35, 40 people. I could be telling you about saving the world and saving yourself. I'm speaking to 40 people. Bring fucking Lady Gaga here. Bring the bitch here. <laughs> and see how the party comes full up. You log online, you go on YouTube, because everything's there now. If you have the Google, you have a PhD. <laughs> if you have the internet, you have an AK-47. If you have emails, blogs and Facebook, you have ammunition. My friend, you log on YouTube. You log on YouTube and you log on corruption in the British government. And you have 1,200 hits. You say, save the world. You might find 3,500 hits. And then type in fucking Lady Gaga blows her nose and you have 300 fucking million hits. That's how fucking backward we've become. We've lost focus. We now celebrate celebrities as though celebrities are gods. What is their lump and contribution to society? We have the essential workers in every society. The doctors, nurses, firefighters, teachers, policemen begging for just a little bit more money to live in a city because cities are expensive. And you have football players whose sole contribution to society is the ability to kick a ball in a straight line and make it swerve. Yeah. <laughs> you have basketball players earning 50 million a year. You have basketball players earning 50 million a year because they have the ability, they have the ability to, to bounce the ball. That's their contribution. Now I say, with all of these footballers, basketballs, fuck them. Why don't we value celebrity doctors, celebrity firefighters? This policeman has solved this amount of crime Farmer. this week. Farmers even. Farmers, yes. The people who provide us with food. The teachers who educate our children. The nurses who tend us when we are sick. Why don't we value these people? Instead we have our priorities wrong. We value these footballers who become decadent. Decadent with and because they're earning so much money. That's what sports are We have our priorities wrong. And the media celebrates them. They tout them everywhere you go. They sell you celebrities. They sell you celebrities. 
Tesco's, Sainsbury's, Asda, Saint, whatever. Wherever you go, you go to your supermarket, your news agent. You go to the front to check out and you see hello. Okay, now magazine. What's the others they have? You. All of these bullshit magazines. You go to the dentist. You go to the doctors. You're sitting in a surgery. What magazines they show you? Hello. Okay, now you. They bombard you with this fatuous, empty celebrity nonsense. And we lose focus of who we are as human beings. We lose touch with our sense of common communication, interaction. Humanity, that's what humanity is. Instead, we aspire to be things we are not, to have things we don't need, to buy into the illusion of consumption. Ooh.